Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. It is a cold morning, so praise God that we God has enabled us to give us the health and the ability to be here together this morning. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 25. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 25. I'm going to read here. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day Drawing near. Hallelujah. Not sure if uh, you've heard these uh, popular self-help books, uh, uh, but uh, it was written by one author. Um, One author made a series of these books, and uh, one is Have a New Kid by Friday, How to Change Your Child's Attitude, Behavior, and Character in Five Days. Another one is Have a New Teenager by Friday, from mouthy and moody to respectful and responsible in five days. He went one step further. He put out a book, Have a New Husband by Friday, How to Change His Attitude, Behavior, and Communication in Five Days. He wrote many other books, but uh, one last one he wrote was, Have a New You by Friday, How to Accept Yourself, Boost Your Confidence, and Change Your Life in Five Days. I did wonder why he didn't come out with a book on having a new wife by Friday. Maybe because it was an impossible task or he would get in trouble. But in any case, just a joke, in any case, these uh, book titles appeal to a core desire to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and bring rapid change in our lives or in others' lives. And this is why every new year we come around and it's very appealing to us because it gives us Another chance to do, make new decisions, to do things differently. Now that we're end of the first month of the new year, how has, you know what, I'm not going to ask, I'm not, not going to ask that question because I know how it goes. The battle in our hearts often is choosing between our means of bringing about change in our lives by ourselves or surrendering ourselves to be changed by the power of Christ. And that is the battle that we face. So in the last 22 message on, on the series of the New and Living Way, we were trying to show that how this change looks like from an individual standpoint, from a family standpoint, from a church standpoint, and finally from a cosmic standpoint as the heavens and the earth unite together under the authority of Christ. So God's blueprint is to bring about change to the new and living way that Jesus opened up for us through his flesh. Romans 6, 4 says this, and you may see that on the screen. We were buried with him, therefore, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So this sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross and the resurrection from the dead on the third day made a way for us to experience this newness of life, this change that it is innate to us that we are seeking. And how can we describe this newness of life in Christ? And that's what we attempted to do in this series since last April. And so as we wrap up the series today, I would like to do one more run through all the seven subtopics, but in light of how Jesus is central to each 
of these new things that, new seven things that we listed. And before we do that, let us uh, spend a moment of time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you that through the word we are washed clean, that through the word you encourage us, you correct us. Lord, you set uh, us in the, again in the new path. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will do the work, O oh God, of convicting hearts, of encouraging hearts, of reminding us of the glory of Christ. We pray for every single person that is here, Lord, every person that is on the way, those who couldn't make it. I pray that your special presence will be with each, one, each, every, each and every single person, wherever they are. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I, when we started this series, uh, Minu started this series, if you might remember, with the title called The, the God's Rescue Plan. And, and he laid out the God's cosmic plan. Uh, as we know, the entire story of the Bible is what? The creation, the fall of man, redemption, and restoration, or we can call it new creation. So creation, fall, redemption, new creation. And this is the nutshell of, of the gospel story from Genesis to Revelation. And then we covered the new covenant. And this was probably one of the most dense messages that we shared. But we walked through the book of Hebrews to share all the covenants God made with man. Finally arriving in its fulfillment in the new covenant. And how, so how do we, and my, my point here, as I bring about each subtopic, is to show how Jesus is uh, in, at the center of each of these things. How is Jesus revealed in the new covenant? And we, we know this because we hear this every Sunday. This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We hear that in every communion message. Jesus himself said that this new covenant I'm establishing today is in my blood that I'm going to pour out for each one of you. So this covenant is an agreement that, that Christ and God is making with mankind through his blood. All the previous covenants that God made were th through the, the blood of goats and, and bulls. They were a foreshadowing of the time when Christ would once and for all come. God the Son would come in the form of a, a, a man in human flesh, live a perfect life, and would take, take upon the cross, be obedient to the cross, and shed his own blood, broke, break his own body to establish an everlasting covenant. This covenant is made by God himself. This is an everlasting covenant. And so that is why we can say the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. I'm not talking about the, the promises that we may, may have to get us through today. I'm talking about eternal promises. The promises that, that when we go through a difficult situation where our faith is on the line, when people challenge us for our faith, when, people, when it is no longer convenient to be a Christian, those moments is when I think one day every saint will think about the eternal promises that God has made, that the same Christ that I cling on to all my life, the same Christ that I will cling on to even in the point of death, that after I die, I will be with Christ. So we cling on to that promise of that he will keep us from falling, that he will take us to the glory. He will take us into glory with him forever. Next, we cover new birth. And John chapter 1, 12 to 13 says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So as you can see here, what is, who, is that, who is described there? But, all, but to all who received him, who is him? Jesus. Who believed in his name, in Jesus' name. He gave the right to become the children of God who were born. This is the new birth. Not born of our own decision making. Not born of the will of somebody else. But of God. God brought about this new birth in us. Through Jesus. That's how Jesus is central to the new birth. Another verse we know is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This phrase, in Christ, is so beautiful. It's used over 70 times, forms of it, in Christ, in him. It is something that I ask my younger brothers and sisters to read and find as you go through the New Testament, underline every time it says in Christ, in him, 
this is, a, this is in part the promises of God that he has for us, that one, that if we are in Christ, that we are united with him, that this is part of becoming one with Christ. And this is a key truth to understanding God's plan for mankind. So if anyone is in Christ, it's not about any, and anyone does a certain ritual act, anyone comes to church, anyone, it is about in, being in Christ. It's about being in a relationship in Christ. He is a new creation. So Jesus is, a cent, is central to our new birth. Next we talked about new heart. And there are many portions that in that message, if you go back and listen we highlighted portions in Hebrews and Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Talks about God giving a new heart, uh, writing his law in our hearts. But there's one verse that maybe we don't talk about as much, but it, it also reveals the same truth. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verses 3, Paul says this, And you show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of of human hearts. Now, in context of this verse, as we know, Paul is addressing about the practice that churches had that day of writing letters of recommendation, so that if a you know random speaker comes or a random messenger comes, an evangelist comes, that the church will know that this person is approved by some other uh, church or place uh, of authority. Uh, and uh, there were others that were mentioning that maybe the apostles need to carry these letters too. He was responding to that. But this, this, this particular verse says, it's highlighting the truth of the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit, that through the Holy Spirit and through Christ, we become the letter of Christ. And in our, this heart of stone that we had now becomes heart of flesh. God changes that heart so that it becomes a heart of flesh. That, and, and not only that, that the law of Christ is written in our hearts. That in our hearts is displayed the law of God so that when we act out, out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks, right? So when, when God gives us a new heart, a, a heart of flesh, when he writes the law of God in our hearts to Christ, our actions will reflect that new reality, that our hearts are now written with the law of God. Next, we talked about new fruit. So how does, a, how does Jesus play a central role in that? We know this, John 15, 4 to 5. Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So abiding in Jesus, and this isn't a common phrase that we hear, but abiding in Jesus is essentially finding a home in Jesus. That we are able to, to reside and remain and, reside and live with Jesus. And those who remain in Jesus are the only ones that can bear much fruit. And Jesus makes a very strong statement at the end that apart from me, you cannot do, you can't do nothing. Apart from you and I abiding in Christ, it is impossible to produce fruit. When we went through the series, we broke apart the nine, fruit of the, nine aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians uh, 5.22, right? We talked about the fruit of the Spirit and, and, and it, Essentially, these qualities, what, are, are qualities of Jesus. The qualities of Jesus as he walked in his earthly life. He demonstrated for us the fruit of the Spirit. This is not, these are not impossible things to, to do. It, it can be done by the same Spirit at which Jesus walked. Then we talked about the new family. Galatians 4, 3, 7. Let me read that verse. Because this is the foundation in which this truth lies. Galatians 4, 3 to 7. In the same way also, when we were children, we were enslaved by the, to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, 
but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the foundation in which we can now extrapolate and, and to think about the larger family, that our, our individual families, the family of God, the church, and, and beyond. So Jesus redeemed us and made a way for us to receive adoption as, as children of God, the Father. Jesus brought us into the family of God. He brought, and he brought us here, the family of God, the church, in which each of us are brothers and sisters in Christ. And collectively, we are his body and we are his bride. And while we covered this subtopic, we addressed family life and we addressed, uh, um, we addressed uh, many other topics. And one of, the things that we, one of the aspects that we talked about is that the main principle in the kingdom and, and in this new family is the verse that we see in Ephesians, that to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This reverence and this awe and the fear that we have for Christ is the foundation which that we have an attitude of submission to our brothers and sisters in Christ, we covered uh, husband and wife relationships. The husband ought to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Jesus is central to that. The wife submits to her husband as she does to Jesus. Children are commanded to obey their parents in the Lord. Meaning that we choose to obey our parents because you desire to obey Jesus. That is a simple principle here. However uncomfortable it is, However difficult it is, it is my desire of knowing the fact that I know Jesus and the fact that I want to display my obedience to Christ is why I will take that step of faith to obey my parents. So in this, are you seeing how all these things are centered around the person of Christ? Then we talked about new purpose. Jesus told his disciples, and we can infer this call to us to some level. He told his disciples, follow me, and I will make you, fisher shall men. Or just take that first part. Follow me, and I will make you. The first, our first responsibility, our first purpose is to follow Jesus. And he will take care of the rest. There's a purpose in which that he has called each one of us, but our, our intent and our goal ought to be to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. One of the messages we covered, we covered Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, that term, in Christ, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. That is, that is the underlining purpose above the purpose of uh, following him. The next level is to be in Christ so that we can do good works that he has prepared for us beforehand. And finally, we talked about the new heavens and the new earth. So as John is seeing the vision of the new heavens and the new earth, he hears, right after that, he hears Jesus say this, Revelation 21, 5. John says this, And he who sits on the throne said, uh, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Here's one of the promises of God. That's why he, Jesus says to write this down, and it is trustworthy and true. Jesus is in charge of making all things new. So while we can experience this newness in our personal life, in our church life, that God, you know, Jesus also doesn't want to lose, uh, us to lose focus on what he's doing at a cosmic level, at a 30,000 foot level, as we often say. You know, a lot of things happen here in our earthly realm, but God is, is at work doing something in a, in a level far above our understanding. And, and in his time and in his ways, he is already at work restoring and renewing creation through each one of us primarily and, 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 and eventually, at the culmination of all these things will be when the new heavens and the new earth arrive. And once and for all, all creation will be renewed and, and, and be, uh, be in a state of uh, 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 eternity where there's no tears, no death, no suffering. So the new and living way, as we just 
I was able to show is, is centered around the person and work of Jesus. In these seven ways, the new and living way can be divided into these seven things. And it is no wonder that Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. I am the way. Is it interesting that Jesus describes himself as the way? In, the, in, other, way, in other words, we can say that we're not, it's not a, a physical road that we are looking for. We are looking at a person. Jesus is saying, look at me. I am the way. A relationship with me is the way, you are, is the way you're going to know how to go. You have to know me. So our desire for change in us, our desire for change in our families, our desire for change in our church, our desire for change in this broken world can find its solace in our relationship with Jesus. He alone can change us in a way that matters. Change us in a way that brings glory to God. Change us in a, ma in a matter that, that, that affects eternity. As the worship team comes up, the core of our relationship with Jesus is the knowledge that we have been truly forgiven. He knows us deeply, yet he loves us wholeheartedly. When this, uh, I, think, I think about the sinful woman. When the sinful woman who, who was forgiven by Jesus came into the house of Simon the Pharisee and broke the expensive jar of perfume, we know the story, poured it out on, uh, on Jesus and she wet his feet with her tears, she wiped his feet with her hair. Was that an empty rich, religious ritual? Or was that a genuine demonstration of a love by a wom woman who felt loved by God and felt forgiven by God? Everyone, went, While everyone was snickering and gossiping and jeering, Jesus said this to everyone, that whoever forg has forgiven little loves little. Whoever has forgi felt forgiven much, loves much. And Jesus also said on top of that, in her love for me, I'm paraphrasing Jesus' word here, words here, in her, in her love for me, without her even knowing, she was even preparing for my future burial after I take upon her sins and the sins of humanity on the cross. She, that she was able to receive special revelation into the plan of God in our demonstration of our love, in our love for Jesus. So, you know, we might be wrestling with a lot of things here today morning. Like, if only I can sin less. If only I can be more disciplined. If only I can be less angry. And so on. All these, all these if only desires overwhelm us because although we know the solution, although we know how to, we ought to be, we lack this desire and the power to make it happen. And that's why, as I mentioned of all the books in the beginning, People chase after self-help books because it gives a certain kind of certainty. If I'm able to change in five days, I'm going to buy this book. Because there's a saying that I can change in five days. But we know, and I hope each of us know, that the solution to change is not in a 10-step plan. It's not in doing a lot of busy work. It's found in, the, in knowing the heart of Jesus. Knowing Jesus and loving Jesus is what deeply changes each one of us. But that starts with the having the revelation of knowing that He knows you fully and He loves you deeply. So do you want to experience newness in life? That's what we've been talking the last 23 messages. New and living way. We've been repeating that over and over as we begin every message. And I often wonder to myself, is that becoming... Is people are getting, you know, deaf to that title because we've been talking about it for so long. Do you want to experience newness in your life? We don't have to wait for 2024. We don't have to wait for next week. Each one of us can experience newness as we communion, commune with Jesus in our prayer closet, in our car, in, uh, in our community groups, in our devotion in our family time, and even in this service. Jesus can make all things new. That is his promise, that I, I, will make, I am making all things new. He has the power to do it, and he has the authority to do it. He has opened the new and living way for us so that, 
so that through his broken body, we can experience transformation. I want to spend just a couple of moments just meditating on this. I know there's a lot of information dumped, so I, I want us to just spend a moment of time just looking at your own life. Let us meditate on Jesus, the broken body of Jesus. The only way is through Jesus, through his broken body. Narrow is the way to everlasting life, and that narrow way is through Jesus. It's not an easy way, it's not the most, it's not the obvious way, but it is the only way. It is through brokenness, it is through, you see suffering there, you see love there, you see forgiveness there, you see peace there, you see joy there. That is the path of Christ. Why it is the road of destruction? That is the obvious road to take. That is the road that unfortunately many of the people that we know are unfortunately on and that is our job to, to, to share the gospel with them so that they see the narrow path. But it is so obvious. It is so, so normal to be on the wide path. But look to the broken body of Christ. Look to that broken body of Christ and see the path that he has arranged for us through his body, through the death on the cross, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He is calling us, come. Come to me. I don't know what you have gone through in your life. I don't know your past. I don't know what you have brought in today morning. But I know who you can go to. Jesus is a sovereign. He's the second person of the Trinity. He is God. He knows us more than we know ourselves. It's the love of God, love of God in Christ that transforms us. It's not our empty decisions. It's not our, our plans to do something different. It is about loving Jesus. There's some, some other promises. That, you know, one of the things that as we go through this life, we unknowingly, unknowingly, we commit mistakes. And I love this verse that His mercy is new every morning. As you, as you spend time with the Lord in the mornings, Remember the fact that His mercy is new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. We serve a God who never relents from giving us mercy. He never relents from giving us new manna. He never relents from giving us new life. So all we need to do is come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us look to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we... Thank you for this time you've given us, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Help us to draw near to Christ this morning with our hearts sprinkled clean, with a clean conscience by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we pray that in this congregation, O oh God, if there are people that are broken, O oh God, broken and contrite, O oh God, those who are wanting deliverance, Lord, to be set free, O oh God, from the weight of uh, and, and the chains of sin, I pray in the name of Jesus, you break it. Lord God, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, I pray, oh God, that they would understand and see the love, oh God, that you have for them. Help us to walk in this earth like as forgiven people, oh God. Set us free, oh God, from, Lord, the, the words of condemnation, oh God. Set us free, oh God, from the shame and the guilt that we carry around, oh Lord. Instead, fill it with love, O oh Lord, so that we can demonstrate the love of Christ to those around us, in our family, O oh God, in our, in our church, O oh God, in our communities, in our workplaces, O oh Lord. Help us to be, O oh God, people of freedom, set free by the Spirit of God, O oh Lord, to do good works. And I pray as we walk in this new and living way, I pray for, Lord, fresh power, O oh God. I pray for a fresh, uh, a fresh word, a perspective, O oh Lord, so that we can, Lord, walk on the straight path, O oh Lord. Even when suffering and challenges come our way, Lord, help us to cling on to the promises of God, which are yes and amen in Christ. And help us to see you face to face one day, O oh Lord God. To join with you, O oh Lord, with the myriads of saints and angels, O oh Lord. Lord, to bring your kingdom on this earth once and for all, O oh God. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.